Hey everybody, welcome to Brickball. My name is Jack. Today is another LEGO Weekly News update. And uh, let's knock out everything that happened for LEGO at E3. Of course, the biggest announcement was for LEGO Dimensions Year 2, and the 16 new IPs were revealed. I went through a lot of them last week, but now I'm gonna read off all 16 very, very quickly. We have Adventure Time, Mission Impossible, The A-Team, Ghostbusters, Fantastic Beasts, and Where to Find Them, LEGO Batman the Movie, Harry Potter, The Goonies, Sonic the Hedgehog, Teen Titans Go, LEGO City Undercover, Knight Rider, The Powerpuff Girls, Gremlins, Beetlejuice, and E.T. You probably noticed that I skipped some pictures, and that's because not all the uh, pictures for those IPs have been revealed yet. Also, some of the Dimensions creators were interviewed by IGN, and the information you can glean from this is is that on top of the Ghostbusters story pack, there's also going to be a Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them story pack, as well as one for the Lego Batman movie. They also said that you can play as all nine of the different Goonies, and they seem to be pretty pumped about a brand new Battle Arena mode. Also, the game Lego Worlds had an E3 trailer, and it kind of showcased you being able to switch off between two different characters, one being the more clear and concise builder, and the other one, not so much. And the main feature of this game update is that it's going to have an online multiplayer option. Also, LEGO Star Wars had an E3 trailer. It showed off a lot of the different storylines you can play out within the game. And I think the main announcement for this is actually that there is a playable demo. If you want to check it out or see the sources for any of the stuff we're talking about, remember, links are in the description below. Moving on with LEGO updates, there is a brand new VW Beetle set from Creator, and it looks awesome. LEGO released a designer video on this VW Beetle. This build is showed off in a pretty nice fashion with a lot of detail. And you can see in this set, they actually created quite a a few new pieces to make the beetle. A couple molds are brand new, and they also just made a bunch of parts in the dark azure color that we've never had before. It looks like a really, really good set, and I'm definitely looking forward to building this one. Also, Alan Tran from the BrickFan.com has put up a press release for the Bricks by the Bay event that will be happening mid-August. This is one of the largest LEGO conventions in the Western United States, and I am definitely looking forward to going to the San Francisco Bay Area for this one. For more information on this event, you can check out Alan Tran's article or visit the Bricks by the Bay website. Okay, let's move on to LEGO Ideas now. If you don't know what LEGO Ideas is, it's a website in which you submit your LEGO creations in hopes to having it become an official LEGO set. Now this week there was one set that got 10,000 votes, which means it is now in the review stage. And that set is Merchant's House by Big Boy 99899. It's a great looking build. It looks like it's from a medieval time period. On the outside you can see a really nice nature scene with cobblestones, weeds, and heck you can probably even guess the season based on the color of the trees. The building for the house looks very, very nice and has a great aspect here, which I think is essential for it to become a Lego set. And that is that you can take the layers apart to check out the interior. Lots of nice building and detail on the first floor. And it looks like we've got a great little build for the second floor. Here's a list of what the included minifigures would be. And congratulations to Big Boy 99899 for achieving 10,000 supporters. All right, and we're done with the Lego news updates. Remember to check the links in the video description below if you want to learn more. And there's also some links to articles that I haven't mentioned in the episode but right now we're gonna move on to the custom creation segment and this is basically where I get to talk about any of the cool stuff I happen to see throughout the week this first build is Porco Rosso by Aero Okinen. This is the main character, an anthropomorphic pigman from the Miyazaki movie Porco Rosso. This build shows a great amount of detail. I really like the shapes that he made with the body. And more than that, I think the build really just sort of captures the attitude of this character. It's a wonderful build. Check out this creator's other stuff and also check out the movie Porco Rosso if you haven't seen it. Next one here is a giant one. This is Park 0937 by Alexis Dos Santos. Our builder claims that this theme park was two years in the making, and I don't doubt that for a second. Here you can see a lot of the classic rides you might see at any theme park, and they all look really, really great. Each of these builds seems to have sort of the proper amount of space between them. Nothing is too cluttered here, and you really can get a decent look for just about everything built from afar. A really nice build, and I'm sure we're gonna see some more developments on this in the future. With the relatively recent release of all of the Disney collectible minifig series, we've seen a lot of custom builds and mocks using these new minifigs. A lot of those builds have been really great, but for some reason this is the first one that really, really caught my eye. This is the True Love Kiss scene from Maleficent, and I gotta say the one thing in Johnny T's build that I really, really like is how he did the floors and the windows. Those alternating cheese wedge pieces sectioned off between that crisscrossing trans blue looks really, really nice. A similar building process I think was used to make those nice windows, and it's a technique I think I've seen before, but the effect it has in this build really, really stands out. 
All right, and the last build for Custom Creations is Hard 6 by Matt Roundtree. If mechs existed during World War II, this is a pretty awesome idea of what they might look like. This machine looks tough and gritty. It looks extremely rugged and designed for very, very heavy combat. I really like the chains on the outsides of the legs, and I just generally appreciate that all the mechanical detailing is right on the outside. The builds for the weapons are really nice. I really like the inclusion of those armor pieces, and just the whole style of this build really, really works. All right, that is it for this episode. Remember to tune in same time next week for another LEGO Weekly News update. And if you enjoy our content, feel free to subscribe or hit that like button. Remember, if you want to learn anything more about what I was talking about this episode, you can always check our source links in the description below. And thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time at Brickfall. Yeah.